I'm going to show you an extraordinary game played between Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen in the semi-final of the Lindor's Abbey Rapid Challenge Tournament. This is great stuff. Stick around. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us on PayPal or patreon.com. You'll find the links down there. Right, here we go. So this is the semi-final and the day before, Hikaru Nakamura was completely blown away by Carlson 3-0, just a complete wipeout. So Nakamura had to hit back in this set two. And this was the first game. So a nice solid start from Magnus Carlsen, a Berlin. And Nakamura keeps the tension, doesn't go for the end game. And takes on c6. And here he castles. Uh, knight d2 is a more flexible option. Castles is very committal and gives black a very interesting option, which Carlsen took advantage of. He played bishop g4. Now this pin looks very annoying. But white can push that bishop away. Of course, you'd very much like to see that exchange. But of course, the bishop maintains the pin. Now, it's always been thought that this was perhaps a little bit dubious for black because actually white can play g4 straight away, push that bishop back and even take that pawn. But black has this very interesting option to take on g4. Now, we, we have this curious situation where black has maintained the pin and there's no light square bishop for white to cover. But it's always thought that this was actually should be better for white after bishop e3, important to knock that bishop back. And here previously we've seen bishop d6 and well a very quick taste of how that can go um here for example this is a game between leko and navara that went like this now this is important that white has this bishop in its sights here and very often it's possible to simply sack that rook back. So for example here, this just gives you a taste of what can happen. And actually here you can see that white is very, very solid, has great squares for the knights, and white is better. I mean the game ended in a draw, but white should be better there. So just bear that in mind. But here instead of bishop d6, the normal move, Carlson played bishop e7, played it very quickly, um, clearly preparation. Let's see how this makes a difference to the position. So king h1, making room for the rook. So both players seemingly happy so far. Remember, we saw in the other variation the bishop was on d6. Here it's on e7. How does that make a difference? Well, here, if white plays Pawn takes pawn on f5. There is a difference. Black has e4. You can see the d file is open, and this is a winning move. If pawn takes pawn on e4, you exchange queens and then play bishop takes knight check, and game over. Black wins material. So that is the difference. That's the cunning idea of Carlson. So Nakamura had to just play knight c3 here. And already, once that pawn gets to f4, shutting out that bishop, then this looks really nasty. I mean, facing this avalanche of pawns, uh, this pin can't be broken. I mean, already white looks completely lost. So Nakamura under massive pressure at this moment. Knight b1 from Nakamura. I mean, this looks dreadful, absolutely dreadful. He's going backwards. And here, maybe Carlsen's best course of action is to take on f3. 
play g4, so these pawns roll on, and then simply queen d7 with the idea of castling queenside, and then you move the rook across, and then the pawns keep rolling. But maybe understandably, Carlson played bishop c5 just to keep that pressure on, keep the two bishops. Still looks fantastic. So what's Nakamura got in mind with this curious knight retreat? Well, he played bishop c3. Aha, he's making room for that knight. So he just gave up that pawn on f2 in order to play the knight over. It gives that knight some support on f3. Still looks fantastic for black. I mean, there's a rook that can be taken here, but no, Carlson just plays queen e7. He values his bishop more. But Nakamura insists, plays the queen across to f1. So Carlson takes the rook, and it still looks fantastic for black. Carlson exchanged, and the pawns roll on. Gives the pawn on e5, but still, it looks fantastic. Now, here, in fact, it's already getting a little bit problematic for black. I would say that Nakamura has done brilliantly just to reach this position. Well, you know, this rook can come into play. The bishop and the knight look very sensible. He's still got a problem with these pawns, but really, I mean, compared to a few moves ago, this is a dream position for white. And you can already see it's not so simple for black. You would like to castle queenside, but remarkably, this is now losing because that queen sweeps down to a7 and black's king is in trouble. I mean, what a turnaround. So already Carlson has a few problems to put this one away because the king is actually stuck in the middle for the moment. You could give a check on h4, but the queen blocks. That's okay for white. So Carlson played rook g8. Fair enough. And rook f1. Now queen g5. So he's just holding things steady for the moment, but he's ready to, to push the pawns. Queen d4. Good move. Well, counterattack, even, even threatening, threatening to checkmate here. So queen h4 check from Carlson. And here, well, he gave a check on g3, king h1, a check on h3. This is the crunch moment. Should Carlson take the draw or should he play on? Stick or twist? Remember, it's game one of this semi-final. It's, you know, a draw is still okay for Carlson. And you know, he, he have three more games. Um, he could just make a draw here. But no, we know what Magnus is like. He wanted to play on. Frankly, that would be the pragmatic way, but it's not Carlson, Carlson's way. He played g3. Now, my computer tells me that after rook d8, then the crazy move, rook d5, is in fact the way to play for a win. It's still really tricky. Uh, no way that a human is going to play this. I mean, it's just bonkers. Um, Carlson went for g3, and now incredibly, I mean, this still looks potentially winning for black. In fact, after knight f3, Nakamura is now better. That knight defends against the mate. And now it's going to be white's turn. G2 played. Still looks terrifying. But after rook e1, in fact, white is okay. After the check, the king bounces up to f2. Nakamura, uh, excuse me, Carlson took on f3. And now this is checkmate. White is winning. Let's see how. Queen e5. Nakamura managed to put this one away. The king actually doesn't have a safe place to go to. If, well, king f8, um, 
well, it's basically going to lead back into the game after bishop b4. Let, let's have a look. King d8 played. Queen f6 check. If the king goes to c8, then queen e6, that keeps an eye on the rook, and that's gone. King e8, and now here is the key move, which presumably Carlson overlooked. Bishop b4, threatening queen e7 mate, supported by the bishop, of course, and there is no way out. c5, bishop takes king d7. Is Carlson's king going to run away? Well, it might do if there's a check here on e7, but queen f7 is really precise. That was the final move of the game. Carlson resigned. Incredible. Let's just see why did he resign? Well, if king c6, then the king gets chased over here, and this is mate in a few. Let's just see that one. And, well, mate in 16,000 different ways, c4 mate. And if king d8, then you take the rook. And let's just go to the very end. It's all done with checks. And queen e8. Incredible turnaround. Brilliant defense from Nakamura. But, oh boy, Carlson will be kicking himself for overplaying his hand in this position. But I think, you know, when it was so clear he had a great position earlier, he just didn't want to just agree to a draw. An amazing game. So, well, they had some extraordinary games after that, but basically Nakamura won that mini, that set, that mini match by two and a half, one and a half. This was the decisive game. So now it's one all, one set all, and they play a decisive third set tomorrow. Check it out. It, it's going to be an amazing finish. Thanks for watching.